In this ICT Basics video, I'm going to discuss what is liquidity. So liquidity is a very important concept when you are day trading. I'm going to give you the traditional or the book definition of liquidity here from Investopedia, and then I'm going to talk about how an ICT day trader thinks about liquidity. And so I'm just I'm going to give you both definitions. I'm going to tell you how I use it, but I'm also going to give you the traditional um, definition of liquidity. So the traditional definition of liquidity is as follows. The efficiency or ease with which an asset or security can be converted into ready cash without affecting its market price. What is liquidity? Liquidity refers to the efficiency or ease with which an asset or security can be converted into ready cash without affecting its market price. The most liquid asset of all is cash itself. The more liquid an asset is, the more easy and more efficient it is to turn back into cash. Less liquid assets take more time and, uh, and may have a higher cost. Key takeaways. Liquidity refers to the ease with which an asset or security can be converted into ready cash without affecting its market price. Cash is the most liquid of assets, while tangible items are less liquid. The two main types of liquidity are market liquidity and accounting liquidity. Current quick and cash ratios are most common to use uh, to measure liquidity. Let's go into understanding liquidity. In other words, liquidity describes the degree to which an asset can be quickly bought or sold in the market at a price reflecting its intrinsic value. Cash is universally considered to be the most liquid asset because it can be most quickly and easily converted into other assets. Tangible assets such as real estate, fine art, uh, and collectibles are all relatively liquid, illiquid, excuse me. All other financial assets ranging from equities to partnership units fall at various places on the liquidity spectrum. For example, if a person wants to buy a $1,000 refrigerator, cash is the asset that can be most e easily, uh, be most easily used to obtain it. If that person has no cash but a rare book collection that has been appraised at $1,000, he is unlikely to find someone willing to trade him the refrigerator for his collection. Instead, he will have to sell the collection and use the cash to purchase the refrigerator. So liquidity is describing how easily cash can be, uh, how easily an item basically can be turned into cash or sold uh, at its market price uh, without, without, I was looking for thumbnails earlier, without, um, without, uh, affecting the market's uh, price. Okay, some of the most liquid assets in the world include uh, cash. Um, the second most liquid or are called cash equivalents. So uh, U.S. Treasuries, the 30-year bonds, 10-year bonds, two-year notes. Uh, U.S. debt, United States debt is considered basically a cash equivalent. Other things that are highly liquid in include things like Apple stock, Google stock, uh, Facebook stock, um, some of your top company stocks, your largest market cap stocks, as well as their commercial debt, so their, their bonds, com, uh, commercial bonds, commercial paper that they issue. So that is the traditional or the book definition of liquidity. Now I'm going to show you the day trader's definition of liquidity and, and talk to you about how it's a little bit different, but I mean, you can kind of see the same sort of concepts in play. Liquidity from a day trader's perspective is where the market um, is more fluid or where there's a large number of resting orders located. Where are there always a large number of resting orders located? Above old highs and below old lows, especially equal ones or relatively equal ones. Above those prices, that is where traders, whether they're uh, mostly we're talking about big money, right? Hedge funds, pension funds, mutual funds, banks, they are always taught to put their stop losses or their risk management, whatever they're using, could be a stop loss, could be some other form of risk management. Um, they are always taught to put their pending orders in the same exact spots. They always put them at the same exact spots, above old highs and below old lows. The market is drawn, it is designed to be drawn, and it is drawn to old lows and old highs because above those places, and if you use a software like Bookmap, you will see this in action all the time. The market is drawn to these old highs and old lows because there's a significant number of pending or resting orders there 
that can be matched with the opposite liquidity order. So for example, what do I mean by opposite liquidity or opposing liquidity? Anyone that is short from anywhere in here, meaning they sold short here, uh, needs a uh, needs a buyer at a low price in order to match their sell order. So they, they've sold short and they need someone to buy back their contracts at a low price in order to make a profit. So where are, where are the opposing orders that can be readily paired with anyone who went short up in this area? Down here, down here, and down here. Okay, so when I talk about liquidity, I'm basically talking about stop orders. But you can kind of see how really I'm also talking about the traditional definition of liquidity because let's say that we're talking about a unit, all right, the, a futures contract of the e mini S&P 500. Where is it most easily converted into cash? Where there are large numbers of pending orders. Where are there large numbers of pending orders? Below old lows and above old highs. So you can see that the market or a, a futures contract is most easily converted from its intrinsic value into cash uh, at areas of interest or above old highs and below old lows. So when I'm talking about liquidity, I'm really referring to these areas of interest or these uh, where the stop orders are. That's really what I'm referring to. But I've given you both definitions and you can see how really they play off of one another. When the market is forming long wicks, like here, here, kind of a long wick there, long wick there, what's happening there? Why are there long wicks there? At that time and at that price, the market was illiquid, relatively illiquid to when the market is forming a, a candle in which the candle body or the open and close is the, the greatest percentage of its, um, of, its, of its range, right? When you have a long wick, it shows you that there was an area of illiquidity in the market, meaning not a lot of resting orders right there that were ready to be matched with the aggressing orders. So everyone that was selling short here, that, what I'm trying to say is that there wasn't as many resting orders ready to take on the aggressing orders at that particular price point at that particular time. Okay. If we go on the NASDAQ, The NASDAQ is only comprised of 100 U.S. stocks, meaning that it is vastly less liquid. There's a lot less capital that is flowing in and out of the NASDAQ as the S&P 500 by a factor of like 50, a huge factor. So notice that on the NASDAQ, you're oftentimes going to have much longer wicks because the market is less liquid. There are fewer market makers. There's less capital ready to take on the aggressing orders in the NASDAQ at all times as there, there are on the S&P 500. In other words, the NASDAQ is a more illiquid instrument than the S&P 500. Okay? So when I'm talking about liquidity, I'm kind of talking about the traditional definition of liquidity because below old lows, there are more resting orders ready to absorb aggressing orders. Right? There's a pool of liquidity there, resting orders. Uh, but I'm not really talking about the traditional definition. So. In this video, I just wanted to give you the traditional definition of liquidity, and then I wanted to give you the definition of liquidity and how I use it, and talk about uh, how the NASDAQ is a more illiquid instrument, meaning there's less capital flowing in and out of it at any given time, as the S&P 500, by a huge factor. Now, the most liquid market, really, in the world is not the stock market at all. It's the bond market. So notice that the bonds uh, will sometimes have wicks, but mostly it's all candle bodies, right? There's a vast, vast, vastly more, hundreds of times more uh, dollars or uh, capital that is flowing in and out of the bond market at any given time than there are the stock market. It's a vastly larger market in terms of capital inflows and outflows than the stock market. That being said, I don't trade the bonds, I trade the futures. So the most liquid futures market in the world is the S&P 500 futures. All right. So what does that mean? That means there's it's more readily uh, converted into cash than the NASDAQ, although it's not as liquid as, um, say, the bond market. So, okay, guys, in this video, I, I, I talked to you about what is liquidity, how I use the term liquidity, and as well as the traditional definition of uh, liquidity. So, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I encourage you to go watch the remainder of my ICT Basics playlist. Thank you for uh, your viewership, and please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.